part two of the Sylvania color tabletop restoration, restore, whatever you want to call it. So I was turning the camera on, I was thinking it's pretty entertaining that if I don't record this in 1080, people will complain when the video being in 1080 is on a TV that produces a picture that's about 320 by 240 in resolution. So we know the capacitors are um, shot or leaky and that's not the point of this video. The point is to pull the CRT out but I thought it'd be entertaining to see what the turn it on and see what the uh, wattage draw is real quick. Well, this might actually not be worth fixing other than the experimentation, the learning process of uh, moving the safety glass. Um, let's pull it apart and have a look. It's interesting when you pull it open and go, I don't remember that. But, uh, okay, I guess this was all the missing tubes that I put back in it. Okay, I pull, it, this is a series string set, so I pull a couple of the tubes out, see what the current draw is with no, no tube filaments. Probably a capacitor reforming. And last time there was a resistor down in here smoking somewhere, so I gotta figure out what happened with that. It's kinda kinda cool. So 26 watts with uh, power factor is kind of high. I wonder if it's got a little transformer in it somewhere for something. Check this out, I'm gonna pull the power on it here. No power. Capacitors have some capacity to them, I guess. All right, now I got the tubes back in. Let's take a look and see what happens here. So it's 25 watts without the filaments. So the filaments are drawing 100 watts. Mm. 
I wonder what happens if I and I know this is not an ideal thing to do but let's give it a try and see what it looks like So 192 watts, okay, I'm going to put the cap, the plate cap on. Two hundred and thirty-one watts with it, ooh. Take it off, put it on. It's drop, driving about 40 watts through that tube. That seems about right. I don't really hear any high voltage, though. Another problem, chronic problem, with these Sylvania sets is the whiskers. Uh, the tin whiskers grow in these um, containers between the case and the uh, pot. So those will have to be de-whiskered. So let's go ahead and see what we get here. I hear the high voltage now. Twenty one kilovolts, I guess that's probably not bad for a nineteen inch or twenty inch, what nineteen? FMP 22 232 watts Oh look at this it's got no vertical sweep It's got a red line I don't know if you can see that And that could very well that could very well be an issue in these pots uh, the whiskers in these pots could could cause the vertical not to run. So first step is to get the CRT out. And I guess what I could do is take a few pictures on how this is all located. It's kind of interesting that since it's a series string uh, hot chassis set they have the the metal cabinet tied to ground through that capacitor right there you can see right here is where it ties to the chassis and goes through that capacitor right there and uh, ties to ground this thing is pretty pretty crusty I like the rust action right there that's pretty cool I think it was in a damp environment. So let's see, how do we get this thing apart? So. so I just have to start taking screws out. It looks like there's two screws. And no problem. All right, so that the degaussing shield just lifted off once I uh, took these springs off, and now it looks like looks like this. Like this bar will just lift off 
And then, this looks, no, it doesn't have a safety band around it. So I wonder, you could probably bend these back and, yeah, exactly. Instead of unscrewing them, I just bent them back a little bit and it's, it's ready to lift right out. It's uh, loose in there. Never handle this tube in the area having insulating coating. The air, area surrounding bulb turnable, turnable. Fingerprints or dust on the insulating coating may cause electrical breakdown during humid weather. What are you talking about? RE rare earth 19 FMP 22 This picture tube employs integral implosion protection replace with a tube of same type um, Guess what we're gonna delete that protection You know it even looks better When you get it out of the cabinet Yes, I am wearing eye protection. What? What is this stuff? Hard as a rock. Oh, here we go. Now that is kind of looking like the RCA uh, PVA stuff. It's really looking like the RCA style with the uh, it kind of smells like it too okay well, I think for safety's sake, the best way to do this is to soak it in water. Uh, people have recommended a little vinegar. Uh, uh, so, I'll add a little vinegar to it. Couldn't hurt it. I was trying to find the resistor that was smoking in the last video, and I think that's it. Um, and it looks to me like it's green, blue, red or something. 5.6 and it's measuring 7.6. And it's a, uh, generally they go down in value when you get them hot. Um, it's a 20 percenter so it's, you know, it shouldn't be any big deal see what else is here that one looks like brown green yellow which should be 150 this measuring 165 so that's another 20 percenter it's no big deal this looks like this is gonna work so what I'm gonna do is store this thing I'll put this in the garage and I'll fill it up with water probably to about here uh, and I'll put some vinegar in there, just some 
white vinegar that you use to clean the coffee maker that you buy at the store by the gallon. And uh, today is March 30th, 2015. Uh, expect a few months uh, so we'll we'll take a look at this back probably in May or something like that got to take your time on these uh, it's not like a roundy where you can kind of force it it's not a circle uh, that was designed to run without the safety lens this these things can explode without the safety lens so we'll see you back on this TV in a few months. In the meantime, what I'll do when I get some time is uh, go through and check the capacitors and also try and see if I can figure out why the there's no volume, no audio, and um, pull these pots apart and clean them. Clean the whiskers, the tin whiskers out of them.